All right, so I'm here with my friend Kirsten. Hello. And we're gonna go to the thrift store, and we're really excited to see. Apparently, this is one of the biggest thrift stores in it's, the area. It's huge. Yeah. I mean, my goodness. I don't think we're gonna be able to get through it. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't know. What are you looking for? Are you looking for anything specific over here? I am looking for athletic wear. Yeah. Um, like maybe some jumpers. Ooh. Um, maybe yeah. some athletic dresses. Stuff okay. Like that. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because it's so hot out here. Yeah. So I'm probably Easy. just looking for summer wear. So we'll mm -hmm. see what we find. Yeah. Yeah. We were at the thrift giant in Louisville for all of you in the DFW area, and it was a hot Saturday afternoon. Although it was really huge, it was surprisingly pretty busy, so I wasn't able to film much. We were there for several hours getting through it all, and the crowd thinned out near the end, which is when I filmed most of these shots. But I was impressed by the jean selection, and there were a lot of really great finds here. Once I get my new pieces home, I like to throw them in the wash and then steam them. This helps with any, especially thrift store smell and fragrance, which I'm pretty sensitive to smells. So I like to wash them again once more on the hottest temperature I can with some vinegar. All right, so here are the jeans along with the top that I got from the thrift store. And I asked all of you what I should do with these jeans. And most of you said that you wanted to see them turn into bell bottoms with crochet. So let's do it. And I've been holding on to this really gorgeous yarn from Darn Good Yarn for a while. I've been trying to figure out what to do with it. And so when most of you all said that you would like to see me turn these jeans into some bell bottoms, I grabbed this yarn and thought that maybe it would look pretty cool with it. So let's see how it goes. The inspiration behind them are these really cute bottoms I saw at Doll's Kill. And I love the way that they crocheted along the outer seam and along the bottoms and added the little crochet patches on them as well. To begin, I'm using a seam ripper to rip those outer seams of the jeans to open it up a bit. And then the threads along one leg were a lot weaker than the other for some reason. And it just came out so easily that it actually came apart all the way up the side of the leg. So I had to sew it back along the top of one of the sides. Then I just ironed out the edges of the jeans a bit and got rid of any little threads that were left in those seams. Now, in order to add the crochet to my jeans, I chose some embroidery thread to sew along the edges because it's so strong and is the perfect base to crochet on. I didn't have enough thread to just add one color along all of those edges and I need to get through this embroidery thread. So I ended up using three different colors that match my yarn. Have you been wanting to learn to crochet but are not sure where to start? I know that when I was first learning, I was so overwhelmed by all the different YouTube videos out there and all the different books. And I just found it really difficult to decipher what was good information from bad information. And so if that sounds like you, you should definitely check out my new online school where I just launched a crochet program teaching you all about how to start crocheting. I'll show you everything from being an absolute beginner to creating your own pieces. So if you're interested in that, you should definitely check out the link in the description box below. And while you're checking out the description box, you should also download your free version of Crochet Cheat Sheets. I have an 11 page ebook showing you everything from how to read a yarn label to converting UK to US standard, also how to read different crochet abbreviations and terms so that you don't have to keep Googling what each different term and abbreviation is like I know I had to do. So check that out in the description box below and download your free ebook. So now using some Taylor's chalk, I'm gonna mark every half inch along the inside of the side edges and bottom of the jeans so that I know where to work each stitch so that it's worked as evenly as possible. Next, I worked a blanket stitch along the outer edge and bottom of the jeans. And I also use this in the thrift flip jean jacket. I love this stitch so much, especially for jean thrift flips. And I use a sharp needle here and bought the embroidery thread through the edge of the seam from the inside of the jean out and tied a couple of knots along the inside of the jean to anchor that thread in. Then I took the thread up through the seam and kind of used this side seam as a guide here to work each stitch. And as I poke the needle through the seam, I take the thread and bring it over the needle from left to right, then pull the needle all the way through and now bring the needle to that next half inch mark up through the seam and pull the needle all the way through. 
working that blanket stitch. Then simply continue these same steps all the way along the outer sides and bottom of both legs of the jeans. Then I started crocheting in the horizontal part of the first blanket stitch and chained four, which will count as a double crochet and chain one space. Then work one double crochet in the next stitch and chain one and continue this all the way around in each blanket stitch. But when I get to those outer corner stitches along both corners of the bottom of the pants, I worked two double crochet and chain one spaces in those corners to open it out and increase a little bit. Then once I worked all the way around, I turned the jeans inside out here and connected the first six stitches and chain one spaces together in the back loop only with a slip stitch. Then I slip stitched into the first chain one space of the previous row and chain four and did the same steps again, working a double crochet and chain one in each chain one space of the previous row around. In the bottom corners of the pant, I worked four double crochets and chain one spaces here because this will open it out to flare it nicely by increasing in the corners. And then I just repeated these same steps for nine rows because I just liked the width here for my project. And after working a slip stitch in the back loop only to connect those rows together, there were some gaps in the work for those first chain three. So I just sewed them together with an invisible stitch in the back loop only along the inside of my work to close up that gap. Then to connect the sides together, I slip stitched all the way down along the rest of the side of the jean in the back loop only. When I got to the bottom, I worked two more rows. The first one, I just worked one double crochet in the chain one space around, but then I increased into those corners, working four double crochet and chain one spaces in those corners. Then in the second row, I increased in every other stitch, working two double crochet and chain one spaces in the first chain one space, and then just one double crochet and chain one in the next. And this is how it looks so far. I love it and I love how there are so many different designs that you can do but I really liked the way that this little lacy design turned out with this yarn and now it's just time to add some crochet flowers. And to make the flowers I'll link all of the yarns I'm using in the description box below. I'm using a five millimeter hook and I to start I'm going to make a magic ring. then chain three, and this is gonna count as a double crochet. Then I'm gonna work 11 more double crochet into that magic ring so that I'll have a total of 12 double crochet in total. And then I'm gonna close my magic ring, slip stitch into the top of the chain three. Then for round two, I'm going to chain three, which also counts as a double crochet, and I'm gonna work a double crochet into that same stitch and I'm just going to increase in this round so I'm going to work two double crochet in each stitch around. Then when I get all the way around I'm going to slip stitch into that beginning chain three. Then I'm going to tie off for this round. So for the next round I'm going to slip stitch into any stitch of that previous round. Then I'm going to chain two and that's going to count as a half double crochet. Now I'm going to work a double crochet into that same stitch. Then work a treble in the next stitch. Then work a treble and a double in the next stitch, then work a double in the next stitch, then I'm going to chain two, and I'm going to slip stitch into that same stitch, which is kind of closing out that petal. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the next stitch, chain two, then I'm going to repeat the steps all the way around. So I'm going to work a double crochet in that same stitch. Work a treble in the next one. Work a treble and double in the next stitch. Work a double chain two 
and then slip stitch into the next stitch. Slip stitch into the next stitch and chain two. And you can see the little petals that are forming. So I'm gonna continue repeating those steps all the way around until I have five petals. And that actually ended up doubling up the pink yarn because it's a bit bulkier and, and creates really nice thick petals. So once I worked all the way around, I slip stitch into the last stitch, tie off and weave in the ends. Then I'm going to use my other yarn and create some nice little edging along the petals and in the middle of the flower here. And I'm just gonna do that by slip stitching the yarn into one of the outer stitches and then working single crochet stitches and each stitch around. And I just worked a border around the middle of the flower by working a single crochet around the post of each stitch. Now I just need to add the flowers and to do so I used an embroidery hoop because this allows me to pull the jean fabric taut as I sew the flowers on the jean. This is really important because if I don't, the jean fabric will bunch up and it will be much harder to sew the flower on nice and evenly. So I found that that helped. And once they were complete, this is how they turned out. I really enjoyed creating these and if you enjoyed this video, please let me know by commenting below and let me know if you'd like to see more thrift flips like this one. Also make sure you subscribe to my newsletter to receive occasional goodies and freebies as well as to stay in the know on all things here at Cactus Lady Creation. Don't forget to subscribe to this channel as well to join me each week for more crochet inspiration, thrift flips, and fiber art goodness. Well, thank you for watching and I hope you'll join me in the next one.